you know, it's it's a lot of drugs and gangs. And my cousin was a Norteño. Um, and he came out here and he taught me about art and graffiti and and kind of like the darker side of life. And um, he was addicted to drugs, which I didn't know at the time, but it's kind of clear now. Um, and um, but I, I loved him. He was my hero. He was like Superman. He could. He was athletic. He could jump and climb anything. He's a smart ass. He could talk shit in circles around people. Um, you know, hopping fences. Doing, he was like the bravest guy and, and the strongest guy. And I, I really looked up to him. And so in 2004, he, uh, he went out one night. Uh, I think it was a Friday night. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go to this graffiti warehouse. And I, I remember that day because that's when Pirates of the Caribbean came out. We were all watching it in my grandparents' place. And I remember standing in the entryway of their house being like, can I go with you? You know, because I just wanted to follow him everywhere. And um, he's like, nah, little man, you know, uh, see you later. Right. And he didn't come back that night, which wasn't too weird because he, he tended to disappear from time to time. Um, but the next day I was playing video games uh, at the f front of our house and uh, or in the front room of our house. And um, I remember uh, I was super excited. I wanted him I wanted him to come home because I had created my first graffiti piece that I didn't copy from him. So I was like, I, I can't wait to show him. And um, I, got, I got a knock at the door and my mom answers it and she starts crying. And then uh, I go up and I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, Josh is dead. And then ran away. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? I feel like I just got kicked in the chest, you know? Um, and he, uh, the detective's there looking all dark, his hair slicked back and leather jacket and everything. And um, I was like, what happened? You know, like I'm just like in fucking shock. I couldn't believe it. Um, I didn't believe it for years, really. Um, but he had been murdered. Um, he was in uh, Globeville, or yeah, is it Globeville in the Five Points? Um, in that area, that's where they found his body. Um, and it was brutal. Like, he had been um, beaten and, and stabbed. And then they stripped his clothes off and uh, uh, lit him on fire and threw him in a dumpster. And so uh, I never saw the pictures, you know, um, but I read the description of what happened to him. And um, yeah, it was it was fucked up. Like it's still unsolved to this day. It's a cold case. I actually became a private investigator to look into it because I'm literally being left on red by the cold case police department here in Denver. There's a, the, Den um, the cold case department, uh, at the, yeah, I'm fucking up my words here, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So the, the detectives, they won't answer my calls. They won't answer my emails. Um, basically not cooperating with me at all. Um, they wish me the best of luck, though, <laughs> and encourage me to become a private investigator. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, his death itself was fucked up because there was no answers. But I would say it, it was the, the reception of it from my community that hurt the most. Um, you know, keep in mind, I'm only like 10 years old. I wasn't like there's fully grown adults that have people murdered. They can't fucking deal with it. 10 year old, I couldn't fucking deal with it. And I just had to go back to school. Like it didn't happen, you know? And I'm like, he's fucking dead. Like, like, can we talk about this? You know? And nobody wanted to talk about it. But it's like, it's like a dead body under the rug. I, I can't ignore it. You know, it's like, it fucking stinks, you know? Um, and so I was, I was upset. I was mad at the world. Um, 
you know, like no one cared, like especially other 10 year olds, like they want to talk about their shows and their TVs and playing games and stuff. And I'm like, my cousin got murdered. <laughs> and they're like, oh, my God, <laughs> like they didn't want to like they gave me a wide berth, like stay away from that depressing kid. Um, and it's so fucked up, like even in high school, like I was I was super depressed after that. And I kept to myself, was very reclusive, very angry. And what I was doing wasn't healthy. I was ruminating on revenge. Um, but it's blind fury because you don't even know where to direct it at. And that's the thing. Is just that any, any person that becomes a problem for you at that point, you direct all that fury to because it's like, I've been cooking for, for fucking years and you want to be a, a problem right now. I'll destroy you. Like, like, I don't give a fuck about you. And um, it's not a healthy mentality being because it's not their fault, you know. But I didn't know that at the time. All I could think about was just how fucked up it was. And um, no one was like, oh, this kid's in grief. He needs therapy. <laughs> They're like, he has behavioral problems. You know, <laughs> like he's yeah. like they tried to put me on Ritalin and stuff like that. Um, my mom refused because she's it's part of the Scientology thing to not take a lot of the uh, pharmaceutical drugs. Um, specifically the psychi psych psychiatric drugs. Um, but yeah, there was no reason, like I should have gotten like at least a week off or something from school, you know?